I'd like to welcome everybody back to the Detailers Guild podcast. I know it's been a while. Absolutely. I just I just want to let you know, people can message us live and actually ask questions. If we get a ping on the phone, then we can answer it and talk to somebody. They could ask us whatever they want. All right. That's how this thing works. I didn't know. This is the third time I've used it, so we'll learn as yeah, we go, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely new for me as well. And uh, it's funny because when I came in here, when you first open it up, it has like different people talking or whatever. Like you can go to different podcasts or whatever. And I don't know exactly what I did, but it started talking. There was another podcast going on. I was actually worried that when I clicked into you, that that talking was still going to be going on because I couldn't shut it off. It'll take getting used to it. Yeah. So it's been a while since we've been able to get together. So um, what have you been up to? Just trying to uh, stay, I don't know, trying to stay uh, sane. Uh, I actually have a lot of free time on my hands to uh, work on uh, my radio show. So I've been still doing the radio show with CJAM and that. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to branch out more and do my own thing. And since I've gotten the equipment available in order to do that um what i've done is in addition to doing my regular radio show i've actually started a second radio show called the urban flow overflow which basically is just a lot of stuff that either i wouldn't play on the station just because or just the case that due to time restraint there's a lot of stuff when i when i put a show together the show it was supposed to be an hour and a half. I may have like two or three hours worth of material that I have to condense into an hour and a half. So essentially what I'll do, I'll do my entire show and then I'll just keep it going. And then I just edit it to make it so that I have two shows instead of one. Well, that's pretty cool. So you've been keeping busy. <laughs> yeah, I've been keeping busy with that. And um, so far, like I, I did two shows prior, like last year. Because I started yeah. in late November, I did two shows in last year, and uh, since uh, this month's come around, I've actually pumped out two or three of them. So we've got it; it's back in business now. And um, I've actually I post all my shows on Mixcloud, and one of the things that I've been doing is I've been reaching out there, and I've actually been getting a fairly good response with that. Now that I've actually been branching out with that, and I've had yeah. a couple of people who've actually contacted me through there who are artists. So one of the things that I wanted to do, which I used to do with the radio, is I used to actually interview people. But I've gotten away yeah. from that for a while. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing in the future, and we'll update you as things uh, get together, is I'm going to be starting to do an interview segment with uh, with local artists, and any artist, really, who wants to uh, wants to talk and showcase their music yeah well if um, you get used to this app we could use you could use it to uh, do your stuff too yeah absolutely it actually records really well like i've i've recorded uh two different shows i haven't had a chance to listen to the second one because i just finished it right before i got on with you tonight but uh yeah. the first one i did it was really clear i was amazed at how well it came out um <clears throat> the only thing was on my end for some reason some of what I said was was cut out on the podcast, but I had captured it on my microphone, which I'm doing now. Like, I've got my microphone recording uh, both of us just in case something gets lost during our, our podcast here. So I've got a backup. Well, that's, that's all right. And what have you been up to? Well, I shot uh, I shot a couple of uh, videos, and uh, you know, I like I made some YouTube videos. I've been you know detailing, not a lot, but I've been. Uh, Anything that comes in here, I've been doing it. That's uh, that's pretty much it. And hanging out at home, it's not can't do too much at the moment. Uh, my wife went and got vaccinated, got her first okay. her first vaccination. I'll share this with everybody out there. Your arm's gonna hurt like hell for for two days. Apparently, the second one, when they go in to get the second one, you get aches and pains, and you know, you don't you get nausea and stuff, and it's. You know, it's par for the course. So anybody out there that's getting the vaccine, if you get a sore arm, don't be concerned about it because that's your body reacting to protein that's in the in the shot. It's not actually the virus. It's actually uh, recognizing a protein, the same protein that's in the virus. So it can prevent it from latching onto your cells in your body. There's, there's our medical review for the day. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, because I can't wait to get to get the vaccine so I can get the hell out of here and start doing stuff. 
So it looks like we got a listener. Oh, cool. Because uh, I was just noticing as you're talking here, little head avatar kind of floats by, and then all of a sudden you see that there's a person there. Oh, that's cool. Uh, if uh, if anybody out there has a question for us, feel free to to ask. I mean, I'm a detailer. That's my background, and uh, Dell's been a DJ for a very long time. So if you've yeah, got I guess any we questions, to introduce ourselves here too, because I, I realized I didn't even, I didn't even introduce myself. I'm I'm Dell. Yeah, I'm Dean, obviously. And yep. um, as far as the radio show is concerned, um, I go professionally by DJ Dell Five Twenty Three. Yeah, this is a it's actually a really cool app here. I tell you. Yeah, I like this app. Uh, I think I think it's going to catch on because Alex that I was on with tonight is a uh, huge detailer. Like down in Florida, he's a pretty big deal, and he's got a lot of really cool friends down there that are all icons. Like a lot of people know them. They're they're very talented individuals down there. If he gets behind this app and starts plugging it to other people, it's kind of cool because it'll open it up. I mean, if we're just using a phone, it's a lot easier to get people to talk back and forth and record it and get it out there. Yeah. There's a lot of people I'd like to interview. And if we can do it just through this phone app, that'd be a lot easier. Yeah, it's just a matter of just lining them up. Yeah. Well, this is pretty smart for them to come out with this during COVID because at least it's giving everybody an outlet. Oh, we got somebody wants to talk to us. Hey guys, I'm going to uh, share this uh, podcast type stereo app session in the Detailers Guild. Uh huh. That's that's pretty cool. cool. Okay, thank you very much, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome that he's sharing that. I, you know, I, I was gonna, I was gonna plug the show tonight, uh, but I haven't even had a chance because I did my podcast with uh, Alex Russell, like I was saying, out of Florida. And yep. we went over what I figured. I thought we were going to be like an hour, right? The reason, well, Andrew and I did ours yesterday. And Andrew and I, we know each other so well. We talked for like almost two hours. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I figured, I figured because Alex and I don't really know each other, like we know of each other, but we're, you know, we haven't, you know, hung out or anything. I figured, well, okay, we'll probably go maybe 30, 45 minutes, you know, and then run out of stuff to talk about. But that's not what happened. So we're on there for a good hour and 45 minutes. But it, it worked out good because, uh, yeah, the, f the files come out clean on this phone. It's amazing. Like, you download it from the app, and you can convert it. Like, right from the app, you can convert it and download it as an MP3. Nice. Or, uh, so that's what I did for the show I did with Andrew. And I'm going to get that all edited, and I'll probably get that up. I'm going to try and get it up tomorrow. It's it's a lot because I was doing video and audio at the same time. And the one I did tonight, so the one I did tonight is actually going to be uh, partially audio, or it's all audio and partially video because mm -hmm. I had the camera running. And then I'm going to get the video file from Alex at his end because he recorded it. So that we can actually have a video for, you know, a few of us have friends out there in the detailing community that want to see both of us live together and thought it would be cool. So I'm going to do a side-by-side -side in uh, Filmora and set it up. So it'd be kind of cool. Yeah, no, definitely. That would definitely be a good thing. And I mean, I think with this the way it is now, it'll yeah. be a lot easier to regularly do shows. And it would be a lot easier for us to do them together. You know what I mean? Because obviously we were doing our singular stuff, which is fine. Yeah. But we've had to, we haven't done a show together in months now because of everything that was going on. But now that we have that opportunity to do it again in this way, it's actually good. Because I mean, at first, obviously, we started off doing the videos and then mm -hmm. COVID hit the first time. And it was like, okay, well, what are we going to do there? And it was like, okay, you know what? Let's try doing the audio. Then we could split up some of the stuff that we did. And we were able to make a few podcasts out of that. Now we can yeah. go even further. I know we had talked before about, you know, doing a collaboration, but it was just a matter of trying to figure out how we could do it where both of us are talking, but it comes out seamless. Now we don't even have to yeah. worry about that. because We're actually just having a dialogue and people can listen. You yeah. know? I, so think, I, think, you know what? I think it's awesome that uh, I, I'm just going to take a second to throw this out there uh, for anybody that's uh, that ever wants to get in touch with myself or Dell. You can reach us both through the Detailers Guild and ExtremeCarCleaning.com. If you go to ExtremeCarCleaning.com, they actually, it's actually my company, but that's where that's where we get the funding to, to take care of our equipment costs and other things that we have for the show. So I'm just going to say, like, I'm, I'm so thankful that you got 
you got all your hardware down at your end so that you and I can both do this. You know, it's a lot easier now. No, absolutely. You know. And I will say while we're plugging here, um, yeah. for anyone who is a fan of music, particularly if you're a fan of old school R and B, funk, jazz, etc., you can listen to my show, The Urban Flow, and I also have the Urban Flow Overflow which I have on Mixcloud. If you go to mixcloud.com forward slash DJ D-E-L-L 523, I post shows there every week. Right now I'm posting about two shows at minimum per week. Um, I do my live show, which is the Urban Flow. I do that locally here every Wednesday on 99.1 FM. That's CJAM. That's out of the University of Windsor. I've been doing shows there for over 20 years now. Uh, this show has been on for five. This is my fifth year doing this show. Actually, it's six year now. It's actually time's going by pretty quick. I've been doing this show since uh, 2015. So it's been going on for a while now. But you definitely want to check that out. And uh, it would be great. Anyone that's listening, if you want to check it out, that's a good thing. Now, the other thing that I would mention to people as well is in, away from the music end of it, just anything that we do, whether it be our collaborations or our singular podcasts that we do through the Detailers Guild, to make sure that you check us out there. And importantly, because we, we put out our videos and that on YouTube, what we'd really like you to do is when you go on to YouTube, subscribe. Subscribe to us. And then hit your notification bell, because then that way, anytime either the Dean or myself puts out a video or we put one out together, you're going to always get notified because they've changed the way that YouTube works now. Because before, all you had to do was subscribe, and then you would always get, whenever a new video would come out from someone, you'd always get notified. But now, for whatever reason, that doesn't happen. So you got to click on that notification bell. So if you do that, it helps us out. It's free of charge, but you know what? It gives us recognition. And at the same time, the more times you see it and you, you uh, subscribe, etc., it's going to allow other people to see it too, because as more people look at it, it's going to be more visible to everyone else. You know what I mean? And we're able to put out that the content there for you. That's going to help you out because Dean's been putting out some great stuff. He's got great advice, whether it be talking about money or talking about how to detail your car tips and tricks that he's learned over the years, just as I've got experience in broadcasting and just my music history as well. And both of us have something great to offer. And you know what? If not anything else, you might even get a cheap laugh out of some of the stuff that we're talking about. Um, so it's definitely something that, you know what, we really would appreciate you check out. Yeah, this week I actually threw up a couple of podcasts that were a uh, little on the comedy side because it's totally different because usually. Uh, Basically, what, what Dean's then was, was primarily, it was a, a podcast that I did as an encyclopedia for people that are just getting into detailing or have only been in a short time, just to share ideas and things that I've run into uh, in my last 32 years of detailing to make your lives a little bit easier. Because when I first started, I had a really rough time, and I don't want anybody to have to go through that. So I put out some... Uh, some Dean Sten videos. There's about 20, 25 of them now. And every one is only about five minutes long. It's not like you're going to have to sit there for hours and hours listening to it, but they're all about five minutes long, but they're crucial information to help you guys be successful. Cause that's what, uh, that's what I'm all about. And that's what the detailers guild is all about. We developed that uh, group on Facebook to help other detailers uh, become the best that they can possibly be. So with that said, I'll turn it back to you, Del. Well, uh, I guess right now um, I've been working on a few shows here lately, but one of the things that I've really been trying to work on here now, and in the coming weeks uh, you will see this as far as the interview stage is concerned, um, one of the things that I want to do is I'm just going to be putting out a show. It's going to be between 10 to 15 minutes long. And essentially what it's going to be is it's going to be a bio of whichever artists I have on, where I'm just going to talk about briefly about what got them into the music business, what their inspiration was for the material that they have out. And then we're going to probably play about three or four songs of theirs. And it's just going to be something that what, I tr what I'm going to try to do once I get the ball rolling with this is to try to have a couple of them a month. 
where we just have different artists come through and I just get to talk to them because what I used to do um, prior to my kids being born, what I would do is I would actually go to different bars and that because there used to be a lot of open mics and whatnot that used to go on in the city. And what I would do is I would talk to these bands. And even though my show was an R&B, hip hop show, whatever you want to call it, I didn't care what the genre of music was that the artists were. My whole thing was, you know what? If you go to a radio station and you want to get put on there, you got to pay to get on there and it's only like a short spot. And if you don't have a whole lot of money, you may not be able to get that spot. And what I'm offering is it's kind of a dual purpose because for me, it gets me the exposure. I like talking to people anyway, so it fulfills my end from that part. But on the other hand, for the artists, they're getting free publicity because what ends up happening is, when I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on Mixcloud. I'm going to put it on our page as well. And then what happens is if they want to download it and put it on a site that they have that promotes it, then it's free publicity. And like I've told some of these artists in the past and like what I've told a couple of people that I'm talk in the process of talking to right now is that they're in the United States. We're here in Canada. So chances are you may not have had people over here hearing your music anyway. So if I put it out there, even if only say 50 people ended up listening to it, that's 50 people who wouldn't have heard it otherwise. And depending on if they like it or not, that could, you know what I mean? It could start something up big for it. You. you know what I mean? And it's free advertisement. So everybody wins there. And it's also entertaining for you because I don't know about other people, but myself, I've always been a fan of history. I love biopics, things of that nature. And when you hear how someone got to where they are, I've always found that interesting. You know what I mean? And especially if all of a sudden, who knows what the future is going to hold? Somebody right now I could interview today, and I'm not going to say that I'm going to be the one that puts them over the top, but they could interview me. I could interview them. And then it could be like two or three years down the road. It could end up being that they get that lucky break and all of a sudden they're big. And it's like, oh, you know what? I remember two years ago, I interviewed these guys before they were famous. You know what I mean? And it's kind of cool. So that hurts. it's just yeah, that hurts a, lot, a lot. Oh, somebody's got a question for us. We got, a, we got something here. Yeah. Hey, Dell. I, I don't really uh, know too much about you. Obviously, I know Dean very well. Um, but quick question. Obviously, you're very skilled in your um, industry just by listening to you for the last bit and listening to all the uh, existing podcasts that you've done with Dean. Um, do you have any interest in detailing? It's cool if you don't. Uh, I was just wondering if you did because it's something that might be cool from to hear it from, I would say, like a consumer or like a DIY or someone that isn't too like in-depth or like focused on the industry. I, I was just wondering. Well, I would have to say that everything that I already don't know is something that interests me. And I mean, that to me, that's one of the big reasons why I love history, because it gives you an opportunity to learn stuff that you may not have known before. So for me, it's like, you know, what? in a lot of jobs that I've worked, detail was a key, you know, whether it was when I was in Tool and Die or... Even in terms of what I do in music, I mean, there's a certain de level of detail that has to be there. So for me personally, it would be something interesting because, you know what, having a clean car, having a nice looking vehicle, you know, it's one thing to bring it to a shop and have it done. But it's another thing that if you know how to do it yourself, hey, that's a good thing. And it's always good to be able to have a talent where you can turn around and if things go like they're going now and you know what, the, the economy changes or whatever, it gives you an opportunity to put yourself in business in a different way. You know what I mean? So for me personally, having a skill that allows me to do something that I don't already know how to do as it is, but allows me to possibly put money in my pocket as well as learning a new thing is absolutely something that interests me. So, you know, when I listen to a lot of the stuff that Dean talks about, that's me learning something just as, you know what, maybe he might pick up a, a tip or two from hearing me talk. Who knows? You know what I mean? So it's definitely. <laughs> well, we've uh, in a couple of our podcasts, you and I actually 
did a back and forth and I showed you some of the equipment that I use. And even yeah. off air, like when you came in the shop, you know, I, I took you on a tour. We should have actually videotaped it at the time, but it would, you know, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing, but uh, yeah, you know what, maybe in the future, like, you know, once, once we get past this little stumbling block that we're in right now, uh, you and I could detail a car together and I could actually show you hands on. Well, you know, I think that that would actually be a good thing too, because as he mentioned, you know, if you're, if you're someone who it, like, it's easy enough for like someone like him or someone like yourself, who's in the industry already, but you get a different perspective from someone who they see you do it, but they really don't have any idea because they're not in the industry. So you get kind of a different mm -hmm. perspective. And showing that person for the first time, so they get to see it, and you know, what I mean, in real time, how all these processes take place. I think that's a good thing because you know what, from the viewer's standpoint, I think that they're going to get a different perspective as opposed to just having two professionals just sit there and talk about it. If all of a sudden, yeah. just say you have me on there and you're showing me, I don't necessarily know any more about it than the viewer does. So it actually makes it even more personal for them because it's like, okay, well, we got this guy who's on there. Well, you know what? He's a DJ. He doesn't know anything about detailing, but yeah. he's learning too. So yeah. in a way, they're kind of learning through me. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, a, it's a good thing. And I think it's definitely something. Yeah. And because I, I know we had talked about that before. I and I think that's good for both of us. The thing is, I've been doing this so long that it's hard for me to you know, back up the hands of time and remember what it was like when I first started, because a lot of times a good detailer is not necessarily a good teacher, because the problem is, is we've been doing it for so long, we just assume that everybody else knows how to do it, you know, and we forget the, the step that it took to get us there. Absolutely, you know, and it's actually funny that you bring that up, because it just kind of reminds me of something else, and that's I, and I actually, in one of the, in an upcoming uh, podcast that I'm going to be putting out, actually kind of touches on this a little bit. And that is the idea that no matter what, like for me, I've been, I've been doing broadcasting in that for over 20 years now. Now, I don't consider myself great compared to some people, but I do know what I'm doing. And for me, one of the things when I first came in back in 96, there were a lot of people who were at a station at the time. And for the most part, everybody was helpful. And one of the things that I found that was really important, and it actually had a lasting impact on me, is how open they were for helping me out. Now, there's there's a show that's out right now. It's Cowboys and Indies on uh, CJAM. And I plug Mark for saying this because back in the day, he used to hang I used to see him at Dr. Disc all the time. And afterwards, when I came in and started doing my shows, he was doing a show there as well. And he'd been there longer than I had. And his show was after mine. So a lot of times, or shoes, excuse me, it was before mine. So I would come in and I would sometimes, because I would get there early, I would sit in on his show. And then sometimes he would sit in on mine and we would talk and we kind of knew each other from just talking at Dr. Disc and that. And he showed me a lot of things. And that stuck with me because now, whenever we get new programmers that come in or whatever, I'll always try to help them because I remember how it was when I started and the help that I got. And I find that one of the things that sometimes gets lost in all of this in any profession for that matter, is the fact that you get to a certain point, just say you get to a certain point of excellence or whatever you want to call it. And then you tend to forget because you've been doing it so long you tend to forget when people who come in who have less experience than you, that you were at one time, you were at the position that they're in right now. So they'll come in and they'll ask questions and you might get short with them intentionally or maybe unintentionally, but you don't necessarily take the time to help them out. So to me, that's why I think it's very important to be helpful and to understand that when someone comes in, just help them because you got help yourself. And in one of your podcasts, you actually mentioned this point, and that is the point that no matter how successful you are, you got help from somewhere to get to where you were. There's no such thing mm. as being self-made in terms of, okay, you know, all the information I got to be a businessman or whatever, I learned it all myself and no one taught me anything. I invented it. No, you got help yeah. from somewhere. Yeah, that, you have yeah. to be able to, you know, pay it forward. 
Yeah. We got a call, eh? Oh, really? When it, when it, yeah, somebody somebody left us a message. You want to want me to check it out? Yeah, check her out. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea because I remember when I was mentoring under Dean, it was like the little things like, oh, you actually clean the, the wheels and the rims, the brush and chemical. You don't just use like soap and a mitt, like different stuff that as a detailer, yeah, I do it every day, but I forget all the small stuff. It's, it's interesting to learn and I think it'll give you a bit of passion behind it because you're going to see all the small details that really get done that as like as a regular person, like when I was cleaning my own car, like first learning, I never noticed that you would do that. So it's, just, it's really cool. Yeah. One of the things though, like when I, when I was actually teaching uh, uh, photo enhanced, I was working at Black Sea Studios, you know, a while ago, back in 2010. Yeah. And I was teaching a, a photo enhancement course. And I taught it from the perspective of the student because I had just graduated from the program. And, I, and I'm not picking on the teachers. The teachers were excellent. They, we were lucky. We had teachers from, from that worked at Walt Disney. We had teachers that worked in, in TV, doing cartoons and stuff. We had all kinds of fantastic teachers. But the thing was... I taught it from the aspect of all the things I struggled with because I didn't understand. And the class did really well. Like, I mean, they loved the class, I, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Like sometimes, you know, it's difficult uh, to be a good teacher if you're very experienced, because if you can't bring yourself back to when you started, it's very difficult, you know, to t pass that on properly to somebody else. Absolutely. And, you know, that's actually it's funny that you say that, because that's one of the things like if you notice, even in sports, for example, a lot of times some of the greatest athletes will try to go into coaching. But most times the best coaches aren't necessarily the best athletes, because the thing is, it's one thing for you to be able to to be excellent yourself. But there's it, there's an art to being able to convey what you know to someone else in a way that not only do you understand it, but you can make it so that they can understand. Because I find a lot of times when it comes to teaching people anything, the biggest mistake that's made is when someone's trying to teach someone something, they teach it from the view that you know how to do something. So for instance, if I know how to, to work a sound, a soundboard, I know certain things, the way certain levels are supposed to be, et cetera, et cetera. And I know it just through the fact that I've been doing it for a long time. But when I first came in, I didn't know those from a hole in the ground. I had to be taught. But because I now know it, if I'm not careful, when I'm teaching someone else, I'm teaching it from the perspective that I already know, when really what I should be doing is teaching it as if they don't know. You know what I mean? And going and giving yeah. it step by step. Because in my head, I know what the steps are. But I can't assume that just because I know what the steps are that they do. And a lot of times teachers make that mistake because you'll see them. They'll get flustered because like, oh, I already know this. But that's the whole reason why you're teaching them because they don't know. You know what I mean? So you have to be able to relay the message where not only are you getting the point across, but you're also not teaching in a way where it comes off as condescending or whatever, where you're going to put them off because eventually if, you, if you're talking down to them or whatever, they're just going to tune you out, you know? So yeah. it's very important to be able to convey that message because you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you're not able to articulate your message properly, if you're not able to connect with your students, then it doesn't matter. And like with you and I, like I know that we've had talks in the past about things that you do and whatnot and just mm -hmm. overall demeanor and the way that you speak to people makes it easy for people to learn because they're going to be gravitated towards that. You don't come off as a person who thinks that you're better or anything else or you talk down to people and you don't do any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot for people to learn from someone like you as opposed to a teacher who's like well you know what i know i'm good you know and you just better listen <laughs> you know well i, I always say Dell, there's there's people a lot better than me out there and it, there is i mean there's people a lot worse than i am and there's people that are better than i am it's it's yeah. not about that it's being the best that you can possibly be i have like like everybody else okay i have uh 
mental and physical limitations to myself. I mean, there's only so many things I can learn. There's only so many things I can physically possibly do. I mean, we all yeah. have our limits, but the thing is you have to respect other people because um, like when he, when I first started teaching Andrew, I was nervous at first, but not nervous that, you know, he would be my competition. That That was never even a factor, but I was nervous that I wouldn't be a good enough teacher to teach him. So I actually went uh, online and I set up, you know, one class at a time with him. But then I went and I researched it to make sure I was right up to date on everything I needed to teach him. Because in, in this industry and in detailing, things change very fast. I wanted to make sure that I was teaching him the very best way I could. And then after, after I taught him and I started doing the, uh, the Dean's Den podcast, I realized that a lot of those videos were inspired by me teaching Andrew. If I hadn't have taught Andrew, I would never have been able to put those podcasts out because that's all stuff that I had to convey to him about the business end of the detailing. So, yeah. you know, it's not just about, okay, how to polish or how to clean a rim. There's a lot more involved if you want to be a professional detailer and run your own business. You have to you have to know the financial end of it. You have to know how to deal with customers. There's a lot more involved than just, you know, picking the right cleaner and, and uh, the right brush. You know, there's a lot more stuff involved. If you want to clean your own car, that's one thing. And you want to learn, you know, how to clean your own car. That's fantastic. But to teach somebody to be a professional detailer, that's a whole different level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially if they're going to go into business for themselves. No, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's funny that you, you mentioned the, the, as far as like the competition or whatnot is concerned. I find that a lot of times that when people are trying to teach someone something, a lot of times they'll either hold back on information or won't necessarily teach them as well as they possibly could because in their head, they're worried that the person may surpass them. And I think that that's really the wrong mindset to have because in reality, the greatest compliment as a teacher that you could have is if someone ends up doing better than you. Because if you're the one that taught them, and if all of a sudden they've been able to take that, take that information that you gave them and just take it to the moon, so to speak, then that means that you taught them well. You know what I mean? And they would have never got there if it weren't for the information that you gave them. So you played a part in that, you know? And it's funny because as I started off as a DJ, for instance, when I first started off, I basically would do like fill-in shows. So if a show was on air and just say the DJ went on vacation or something like that, or was sick or whatever, I would come in and I would fill in. So, for the first few years, I didn't have my own show. I was still DJ Dell. I was just DJ Dell at that time. The 523 didn't come in until my son was born. But um, mm -hmm. I would do different shows, but it was all different variety. I'd do a country show, a talk show, whatever, whatever. Well, when I finally got in and did After Midnight Urban Beats, which was my first solo show, I was doing all the R&B and stuff and like that, like I'm doing now. Now, there were other shows that were the same genre as me around and one of the guys who i won't mention by name but we'll just say he played a similar show to what i did but he was on he mm -hmm. did his show solo before i did and i remember one of the things that i wanted to do because we didn't really have a big r&b following at the station there was only like three like three shows at a time and i wanted to do a collaboration show with him because he played more rap in that and i did more of the r&b thing but i figured you know what if we did a collaboration show because his show came on right before mine anyway. So it could be like a three hour block and it could be huge. But the thing was, he was so worried about the fact that somehow, even though I hadn't been doing my solo show as long as he had, that somehow I would take away from his fan base that every time I asked him, he would send me a message, but the message would end up being just a promotion for his show, but he would never actually yeah. come on my show. And it was like, okay, you know, and then eventually I just gave up and I ultimately did collaborations with other people. But the thing was, it's like, you know what? I'm not trying to take away from your crowd. Not at all. Mm -hmm. If anything, if you say have a hundred fans, for instance, and I have a 50 fans, if we're doing the same kind of thing and we do a collaboration, it's not that somehow I'm going to be taking away from you. Looking at it that way is looking at it the wrong way. If anything, you're going to gain 50 fans. 
and I'm going to gain a hundred fans. So both of us are going to benefit from, you know what I mean? From helping each other out because it's possible that the 50, 50 people that were listening to me might not have been listening to you and vice versa. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. not an issue of competition. It's just, if there's things that you do that I don't do and vice versa, we can help each other out and then both of us can be successful. But I find too often that a lot of times when it comes to people who work in the same field, there's that jealousy factor there where it's like, well, I, I won't help him out. I could, but somehow he's going to affect me in a negative way when that's really the wrong way to look. A lot of people think like that and it's, it's totally wrong because nothing makes me happier than when Andrew tells me how well he's doing. Now I wasn't Andrew's only teacher. Okay. He did have, he did have another person that taught him, okay, and uh, I'm just proud, you know, to be part of the part of that, you know, that he moved yeah. forward because because I helped him. I got help too. I mean, that's why I pay it forward because uh, Mark Warlock and another painter back 30 years ago both taught me. I mean, if they hadn't have taken the time out to teach me how to polish and do paint correction, there's mm -hmm. no way. There's no way. And they changed my life. And that's the thing. Like the opportunity to change somebody's life is, is more than keeping stuff to yourself. That's just stupidity because that's like, like I said it the other day, it's like buying a book and never taking it off the shelf and reading it. It's stupid. Why would, why would you keep all that information locked up where nobody can get access to it? That's stupid. You know, you're only hurting yourself because you're giving up an opportunity to change somebody else's life. And you know, if you go and you help somebody, you know, they're going to come around and eventually it's going to come back. You know, either they're going to help you or somebody is going to see that you've helped that person and they're going to want to help you. It's a good thing. Like my father taught me when I was a kid, he used to say, do things because it's the right thing to do. If somebody needs help, you help them. He goes, it doesn't matter about anything else. If anybody, if they're a human being and they need help, you help them. That's the way it is, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. And I mean, you you also have to look at it from the standpoint that if you're going to help someone, if you're truly going to help someone anywhere, you have to do it from the standpoint that you don't expect anything back. And because there's going to be some people who will pay it forward, but then there's going to be some people who are just going to get it and they're just going to go. And you know what? The thing is, is if you're being genuine and you, you wanting to help someone, then it won't matter if you get it back or not. Now, ideally, obviously, of course, it would be cool if you, you know, if you were recognized for what you did in that, but you want it to come naturally. Like if you're like, just like fishing for compliments or whatever else, yeah, they can compliment you or thank you or whatever, but it's, it just feels a lot more fulfilling if you help someone out and then they come back and be like, you know what, Dean, I really appreciate what you did for me here. You know what? I learned a lot of stuff from you and you know, I wouldn't be here without you. So I thank you, you know, as opposed to you being like, okay, so you're going to thank me, right. You know, or be upset because maybe the person does come back and helps you out, but maybe they're not able to help you the exact same way that you were able to help them because maybe they're not in a position to, and then you're mad because, well, they didn't pay it back. Exactly. It's like, no, that's not the reason why you should be doing that. You know, I met Jimbo Balaam down in, uh, in Vegas, right at SEMA. And Jimbo yeah. does uh, his podcast and he's fantastic. I mean, he, he was the first one to ever do the detailers podcast. And, you know, a lot of people listen to it. And when yeah. I started, I told him what I was doing. And he's right there in my corner telling me, hey, that's fantastic, man. That's fantastic. Like, nice. And here's a, here's a guy that could just say, you know, I don't want to talk to you anymore because, you know, you're you're trying to compete with me. But he's not like that. And and that's why I, I support <coughs> everybody that's out there supporting others, man. Because, you know, it's fantastic to help people because it's just more opportunity for people to learn. It's not like I'm trying to copy him or he's copying me. It's not like that. It's just we're both providing more information. That's That was the whole purpose of doing the Detailers Guild was because when I started out, there was no information. Like, yeah. if you didn't know how to detail and you start your own business, you're going to starve to death. And I almost did. Like, I had a rough, rough go when I first started doing it. And like I said, I don't want to ever want to see anybody go through that. That's why I created the Detailers Guild. That's why I post videos. 
That's why I help anybody that reaches out to me and says, Dean, can you help me? I've had video conversations with people on Messenger for an hour and 45 minutes to help them out. Mm -hmm. And they're not even in my town. I mean, these are people in the States. Uh, I talked to one guy in Alabama. I talked to another guy. I talked to one guy, and uh, he just, uh, where the heck is he? He's down in uh, Mexico, and he spoke English. You know, because at first I was nervous to pick it up because I didn't, eat, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he was speaking uh, English to me and we got through it. And, you know, I answered his question. And, and it's cool because you get people reaching out to you and you help them out and they're thankful you made somebody's day, you know? No, it absolutely makes sense. And, you know, the other thing I was going to say too is that, like, when you gave the example of having the book and not reading it, the thing about yeah. it is, is if you help somebody out, you're going to, you're going to leave a legacy because if you just have a bunch of information and we could use the example of say like a recipe, you're someone who has some cool recipe on how to make the ultimate chocolate chip cookie and yeah. you open up a business and you're making these cookies and you know what? Everybody's coming there. You know, they're talking about, you know, Dell's chocolate chip cookies are the best around. Well, if I'm the only person that has the special ingredient, like just say the ingredient is shredded zucchini. If for whatever yeah. reason, that's that's the secret. If I don't tell anybody else, then when I go, it goes with me. And then the legacy yeah. ends. But if I tell someone else and say, okay, okay you know what? Maybe I pass it down when I de decide to retire. I pass that yeah. down to someone else. Then the legacy continues. And it's just like with regular information. If you know something, you tell someone else then that means that someone else knows because you got it from somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah. So your legacy lives on through the fact that people know how to do this technique or whatever, because maybe it is something that you perfected, but if you let people know how to do it, then it's going to go on and on and on. And especially in this day and age where stuff gets recorded on the internet and whatnot, you'll be immortalized. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, the thing is, here's another thing, too. Eh? The competition stuff is a bunch of baloney because, especially in my field, they eh, with detailing, there's there's yeah. 300,000 vehicles plus in, in this area, okay? There's 30 detailers, okay? That means there's 10,000 cars uh, per person because all those 300,000 car owners do not know how to detail a car. So, yeah. like I was saying before, if, if we're all doing it at the best of our ability – all 30 detailers are going to have more work than they can possibly handle. The problem is there's an element out there of people that, you know, don't want to learn. They don't care. They're just doing it for money or whatever, and they just want to get it done and over with. Those are the ones that ruin the reputation for the rest of us. And whenever yeah. somebody is doing it, doing a bad job out of ignorance because they don't know any better and they want to learn, those are the people I would love to reach out to and help. I mean, that's, you know, that's why I push and say, listen, hey, if you ever need any any help, look me up, you know, go to my site, go to, you know, the guild, do whatever it takes, but learn. Because the learning is yep. so important. With learning, they need good teachers. And if you're not willing to teach, you know, you're part of the problem. Like, you can't complain that a detailer sucks if you're not willing to teach them and show them the right way to do something, mm -hmm. you know. And it goes in any field. When I worked at the casino, some of these guys... They didn't want to show anybody anything because they figured if they do it, they're going to be out of a job, which is stupidity. Because number one, the jobs there all work by seniority. You can't bump somebody out unless you have uh, more seniority than, than they do. And on the flip side of that, you know, they, they, uh, they can go anywhere they want. I mean, the world is crying for, for uh, skilled technicians all over the place. If you go and you teach somebody a skill, you're not going to lose your job. Because there's a hundred, a hundred jobs waiting for every person that becomes an engineer or an electrician or an HVAC. Like there's yep. a ton of jobs. A plumber. You know, there's no reason why. Why not share the skill? I mean, if you know, if it's a one horse town and you're the blacksmith, then that, that's different. You know, if you're the only guy that shoes horses and there's one horse in town, then I can see. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go and share your skills with anybody. But give me a break. Yeah. So what? What are you? Uh, what do you plan on doing moving forward with your show? What are you thinking? Like with uh, video? Well, 
I think eventually, um, I think eventually I'm going to do that right now. I'm still doing records like r- recorded sessions like I am right now, but I think ultimately what I want to do is I want to actually do some live sessions. Now, when I do do a live session, it may not necessarily be video format because I know on Mixcloud, they do give you an option to be able to broadcast live. So I think eventually what I'm going to do, because they do have a paid format with that as well. And with that, you can actually be monetized as well. And um, you can get out more people. So I think ultimately what I may do is I may do that and then go in as far as actually doing like live broadcasts, kind of like what I do with CJAM, but actually have a live broadcast from home, you know, too. So I think ultimately I want to do that. But that's going to be something that's going to be down the road a little bit. But I would say in the immediate future, one of the things I want to do is I want to continue putting out new shows. I'm going to, one of the things I am going to be doing is be doing more features in terms of like uh, particular artists and that I'm going to be doing that as well as getting the interviews off the ground. So I'm in the, I'm in the stages right now in the preliminary stages right now of doing the uh, interview. So I really want to get that off the ground and uh yeah that because i think ultimately uh with the detailers guild page once the uh, interviews start those are going to be something that's going to go on the page as well so like i was saying earlier what i plan to do with that is not only have that on my mixcloud page but also have that you know on our you know on our youtube page as well so people can uh check that out it's getting easier now that we have this this app that we can use mm-hmm. it's a lot cooler because uh like I've done, I did a Q&A with Andrew. I did a Q&A with Alex. We're doing our show right now. And then I'm doing a yeah. Q&A with uh, Curtis Wesley tomorrow. Nice. So, I mean, it, it's cool because now I can put these things out. But the, the thing is, after Curtis's, I got to I, I can't do any more for the week because I got to sit down and edit all this stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> it takes a while. But uh, the audio podcast is a lot easier because all I have to do is kind of set up the set up the thumbnail which doesn't take too long. It takes about an hour to do one nice. So I'll do the thumbnail, and then uh, the, the shows that are going to take me the longest is going to be the one I just did with Alex because it's it's got live video in it. And yeah. the one I did with, uh, with Andrew, I'm just finishing editing that. I don't have a video side from Andrew. I have a video feed from my side. So what I did was I put up, like when I put the video up, it, at least I've got a picture of Andrew up there with me yeah. while, as I'm doing the podcast so people can see it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, it, it's funny because I haven't done this much work since I was in animation class. Yeah. You know, so to sit here and edit edit video and edit audio, it's it really brings me back. Yeah, I feel like I'm back in school again. It's, it's pretty cool. Oh, absolutely. And I will say that, you know, for everything that's gone on over the past year with the pandemic and that, and I mean, obviously a lot of people have had a lot of negative things to say. There have been some positives that come out of this. And I mean, it's kind of like make lemonade out of lemons, you know, because yeah. really, truly, like cause you just look at our situation. We started off where we were just going to do videos and it turned yeah. out because of the way everything went down we were forced to have to change what we were going to do. Now we still got the videos out, but we had to, you know, we had to come up with a different way. Cause if we had just only gone with videos, we'd still be sitting at three, but our page littered with, with, you know, different uh, podcasts now because of the fact that we changed it up. We're doing the audio. And to be honest with you, like using audacity and that I'll tell you the equipment, the uh, software that I was using before, I was familiar with yeah. that, but I wasn't familiar with the editing with this. I've le- This has been a learning curve for me. It's been a learning process, and it's been fun. Things hadn't have gone down the way they did. I would have still ultimately wanted to do things the way I'm doing them now, but I think it was a blessing in disguise. And right now, I'm at a further point than what I would have been at the same time if thing was, things were just going as normal, because I wouldn't have had the time to sit down and you know mess around with Audacity you know, and all these other programs to do my yeah. audio edit, you know. So I, I think that yeah. something good came out of that, you know. And I think there's a lot of people who are in this boat because for all the negativity that you hear, the one thing that I also do hear is people talking about the fact that, you know what, and you're an example of this, where you got projects done at home that you had on the burner to do, but if none of this mm-hmm. had went down, not that we wanted COVID to happen, but if we didn't have this mm-hmm. free time, 
you wouldn't have got these things done. So a lot of people were able to get knock off a lot of things that they put off doing or would have had to have done later because they just had free time. And it's like, okay, well, you know what? I could sit here and do nothing. Or, you know what? I could fix the cabinets that I've been meaning to fix in the, in the kitchen or whatever the case is. Well, you know what it is? A lot of people, they take stuff for granted, okay? Before COVID hit, we're like little toddlers being led by the hand by mom and dad. The world is bright. The, you know, the birds are singing and all this crap. And the thing is, when somebody holds you down, you can either lay there and cry about it or use every ounce of strength you have to get back up. And you know what? This thing kicked both of us, you know, right square, and we both were able to get back up from that and just press on. I mean, this hasn't been easy for anybody. To sit there no. and mind and moan about it on the Internet, you're not getting anything done. Like, take that energy and focus it into, into where you want to go. Move in a different direction. I walked away from a job I had for 10 years, yeah. you know, and, and I, uh, I took it right on the nose. I went, I put eight grand in my garage. You know, I bought 24 grand worth of product. It's either go big or go home. Like, you either have to go all in or don't even bother this was a good kick in the ass for a lot of people because you're right. You know, I had all these jobs to do and I got them done. And there was other things I always wanted to do. I said, oh yeah, I want to do this one day. I want to do that one day. Well, guess what? Today is the day. You don't have a choice. Like you either got to, yeah. you got to either do it, get the guts and the courage to do what you always wanted to do and go forward no matter what, or you sit back and take it. Like, yeah, a lot of people, I, I feel bad. They lost their business. They lost all kinds of stuff. I lost stuff too. You know, I lost, I lost six months of revenue. I lost a job, but I turned it around. I mean, I, I dug deep and I found another avenue. And, and part of that is like, you know, I spent 15 years in school, in, in college, after high school. So if anybody says, oh, you're lucky, this and that, I'm not lucky, man. I sat in that classroom for 15 friggin' years and it finally paid off because I was in a position where everything I had learned there all came full circle and helped me open this business up to full full potential and all my experience and everything else. I did 30 years of detailing. It's not like somebody just said, Oh, here's a job. You know, you can just have your own business and here I'll buy you, I'll buy you this garage and everything. No, I every uh, board that's up in that garage, every gallon of paint that's in there, that's a lot of hard friggin' work, man for a lot of years like that's 30 years of hard work so that's why like you know if so, if somebody out there wants to move forward and it just needs some help man by all means i'll help them but i mean you have to be willing to help yourself you have to want to do it like andrew did that too i mean andrew walked away from his job you know it took a lot of guts mm -hmm. it's scary to walk away from stuff that you know like we all want to be in this little bubble where, you know, the world is fantastic and everything's peachy keen, but that, that's not the way it goes. When tragedy happens, you either have to deal with it and make the choices, the hard choices that you have to make and move on or you're going to fail. Yeah. Anyway. No, absolutely. You know, and actually one other thing I was going to bring up here, and this is actually um, dealing with the actual app itself. Um because we know, obviously, we're talking right now. Now, you say that afterwards when you're talking, because I noticed when I went on, it actually had a listing of the three shows that you did. Like the shows that you yeah. did, it was listed there. So for a yeah. show like this, for example, is the file itself big when you download it? Uh, I won't know until I download it. Oh, have you? I was going to say, so you have No, I, like when we're done our show... Then I can convert it into an MP3 and download it. I have up to seven days to download it, so I'm going to download all of them probably tonight. Okay, 86 megs. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah, that's, that that's good. That was audio for me. That was two hours. So, I mean, how long was that? Long. How long was that one? Almost two hours. Okay, well, okay, we're that's that's golden. Then we're good. Yeah. I mean, it's under 100 megs, so it's not a big deal. Oh, that's not bad at all. Because like when I do one of my shows, when I record directly onto uh, Audacity for an mm -hmm. hour and a half show, it's usually around uh, two hundred megabytes. Yeah. Like with this file, so if I send it to you, yeah. If I it, when I send you our file, okay. If you want to use it, you know, and use any of that content for your show, which is, you know, you can do what you want with it. But when I send yeah. it to you, the only thing I would suggest is if you're going to bring it into Audacity, you're going to have to bump up the uh, the amp on it 
two point two, I believe it was that I bumped it up. Yeah, because yeah, with any of those, you don't want to uh, you don't want to go over like two or three uh, decibels because that's the thing too. Because if you do it too high and it starts peaking, then yeah. when people are listening to it, it's not gonna it's not gonna be good. No, definitely not. You notice that uh, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine might get put through in the states. Yeah, I was hearing about that. And yeah, uh, sure. I, I, I don't know if it's as effective. There was something that they were mentioning about the effectiveness of it, but uh, I know that they brought up that they that they had something going. It's sixty five percent effective, is what they're saying, as opposed yeah. to, you know, sixty five to eighty five percent, depending, mm -hmm. you know, depending on you know physical makeup or whatever. But it's not as as effective as the other two. But the thing is. They can rapidly get it out there, and it's only one injection, which makes it a game changer. Because if it does work, at least you know the the states will have a chance of getting this thing under control. I guess Canada is not going with the Johnson and Johnson when they're going to go with a different one. But yeah. uh, but I want to see these people get some relief for God's sake, because the the suffering that is going on there is just ridiculous. Like you know, thank God, and it, without without getting political here. Thank God it looks like there's some improvement as far as, you know, the help that the people need over there. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think on a future show, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to dig in on that a little bit. Not, we don't have to go too heavy, but uh, I think, uh, yeah. Well, we can dig into it, but we'll have to do it as a comedy routine because, you know, it's pretty much, that's, it's just ridiculous. Some of the stuff that I'm seeing over there. Yeah, absolutely. But what are you going to do? You know, and it, the sad thing is, you know, like the people there in the states are, are there's fantastic people over there, but unfortunately, they're not the ones that are getting the attention right now. It's it's the it's the ones that are bad, you know, that are getting their faces, you know, everywhere in the news. Usually, you have well, you a small what? minority of people that are the idiots, but they're the loudest. Well, you know what? Like like you know, if two if two old guys are sitting in the park playing chess and getting along, it doesn't make the news. No, you know. So, yeah. anyways, thank you very much for for uh coming on with me we're gonna have to do this more often maybe we can start hooking up on sunday night reach us either through extremecarcleaning.com just click on the youtube link and you'll see it right there at the top of the website or uh they can find us through the uh detailers guild group on facebook that's another quick way to find us because we post everything up there so yep. this video this audio clip will be up there all my podcasts will be up there as well and dell also advertises there as well for uh mix yep. cloud yep. So, so yeah if, if you guys want to find us either go to detailers guild or go to extremecarcleaning.com absolutely and if you guys want to check out uh, my radio show as well you can either uh if you happen to be in the windsor detroit area you can uh, check it out on Wednesdays at uh, cjam.ca or online. You can check it out live as well on 99.1 FM. Or I've got 167 shows. I'll just go to mixcloud.com forward slash DJ D E L L 523. And you can check this. You can check me out there. And I will be posting some of our stuff there as well. So you want to make sure you check that out. And just to put this out there, anytime you guys uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell on any of the videos that we have posted on the Detailers Guild, that helps both of us because eventually when that site is monetized, that, that's going to be used to grow the Guild site and help us so we can put on a better show, get better equipment, do better things. So the best way to contribute, uh, we don't ask for donations. Donations, but the best way to contribute is just support us get people to subscribe uh, subscribe yourself and uh, just put it out there and if you guys like the show share it with other people please that's the easiest like way uh, to support us so we can grow yep just like and subscribe and thank hit the notification so bell that's a big thing too so then they get the updates thank you to everybody for tuning into the detailers guild podcast there will be a lot more in the future we promise now that we've got everything here to get it done we will uh, put one out once a week, at least. Yep, sounds good. Well, thank you very much for listening. Thanks for having me on. We'll have to do it again no soon. No problem, Bill. It's always a pleasure, man. I miss All you. Right, as man. soon as I get my uh, vaccinations, buddy, we'll uh, do coffee, I promise. Yeah, absolutely, man. All, All right, right, buddy, take or it shoot easy. some sticks when that gets open, too. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. All right, take care, man. All right, bye. Yeah, take it easy. Bye-bye.